Hello everyone, welcome to the Spotlight. I thought I was live and I wasn't, but now I am live. Hello everyone, welcome to the Spotlight. This is our live broadcast right here on, uh, no, well, yes, on Facebook. We are live on Facebook. We are here at the Joint Boutique Hotel and Cowork at Cafe Rio, enjoying a wonderful latte courtesy of Karina, who's always standing over there. And this is the one place where you can come and talk about whatever you want. If you have something to toot your horn about, or you have a show to promote, or you have a great business that you think people have not found out about, or if your homemade cookies are better than anybody else's, this is the place to do it. And today we have two guests. Well, we have two plus three guests which will make sense to you in a moment. Our first guest is joining us live from another planet. And she is a funny, funny lady that is about to come to Puerto Vallarta with her very, very funny improv show. Her name is Diana. Her last name is Frances. And I think I'm just gonna bring her up so that you can learn more about her directly. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Tooting my horn. Do 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 do. Yeah, this is the place to toot your horn. Let me get your scrolling banner happening. Hello, can Diana. Say, hi. hi. Can I just say I am in awe of your technical abilities? Oh, honey, some days it's better than others, but all this all this weed that I consume just makes it very challenging. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, you got a scrolling banner. I'm thrilled. Well, scrolling banner is good. It's been forever since I took this photograph of you when you were performing at Encanto. May Encanto rest in peace. I'm looking at Encanto from the window right here. Uh, but this is from your past performance in Puerto Vallarta. What have you been up to since then? I have been up here in this strange planet, as you uh, say that I'm in, in Toronto, Canada, freezing my butt off, just doing everything I can to get back to Puerto Vallarta. And you've made that possible. I have made that possible. We are coming back. Uh, we loved our run at Encanto Theatre. I love that space so much. Um, I, I do hope that Tracy comes back and sets something, up out, uh, something else up in town. But in the meantime, we are going to be in the adorably uh, cute theater uh, in Art by Arte. And what a great space that is, and what an underappreciated space, because a lot of people don't even know that it's there. Why don't you, but let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, okay. Even before we talk about the venue, if I ran into you at a party and I asked you what you do and I went, huh? What, what, tell, tell, for people that have no idea who Diana Francis is, what, what are you up to? Well, I am a, a, a improv comedian, which basically means I get on stage in front of an audience. I have no script. I have uh, nothing has been really rehearsed. We come to the audience, we get suggestions and we make everything up on the spot. And with Leave It to Cleavage, we are 1950s, cheeky, slightly tipsy housewives who just don't understand these modern days. And we are basically hosting a big cocktail party and we want to get to know our guests. And uh, through improvisation and audience participation, we celebrate everybody who comes to see us and, uh, and have a drink with us and learn a little bit more about this, these modern girls. We just don't understand them. So, you know, because I always, I think I'm an old fashioned girl. I'm not a modern girl. And I'm surprised because you talk about the 50s. Well, I was born in the 60s, but I'm still surprised that we haven't run into each other in this world of pre-modernism that you're talking about. So what is like a basic difference between a cleavage girl and a modern girl? Well, I mean, the, the cleavage gals, they don't, what the modern gal doesn't realize is that us gals in the 50s worked really hard to set up the perfect system where the men had to go to work all day and the women got to stay home and drink. But now these modern gals, they want to have it all. They want to 
they want to work all day and then come home and do uh, work all day there. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me at all. Well, it doesn't make any sense to me either. And I've tried to drink my way through it <laughs> and I have failed miserably. So how did you come up with this idea of doing this, this show? And why is it called Leave It to Cleavage? Well, because everybody loves boobs. I mean, oh, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> for different reasons, but yes, boobs are fun. Well, we, uh, the, the idea was originally created by myself and my uh, a former improv partner of mine, Ellie Harvey, and uh, we actually created this show about 15, 20 years ago, and we stumbled across these tips for being a good housewife that had actually been published in a 1950s episode or, uh, or article in Good Housekeeping, and it was just completely ridiculous these tips that they they gave housewives so we ran with that idea and we created this show where uh we started with these tips but we sort of get the audience to fill in the blank and um and the show expanded from there we added more cast members we toured canada you know in five six hundred seat theaters that we were selling out like crazy and um oh where'd you go I'm still here. I just wanted oh. to get at least one moment of you filling the screen so that I oh. have a nice still image. So this oh, is gosh, this is your time to look fab. Okay. Oh gosh, this is me and my Fleetwood Mac album. Um, so yeah, we uh, we expanded the show. We toured all around Canada, and when I started coming down to Puerto Vallarta to see shows, I realized that it would be such a good fit because it's a little bit cheeky. It's funny. It's female forward. It's for all audiences. And, and it's, it's, uh, we've been really thrilled with how we've been received. Now, let me ask you a loaded question, because there's not a lot of comedy in Puerto Vallarta to be, to be enjoyed. There, there are a, a number of very funny drag queens, but that is kind of drag queen territory. If you get up and, and, and wear a dress, either you have to be very talented with your voice or your dancing skills, or you have to have some sense of humor. But you guys are not drag queens, but you're doing comedy. How did Puerto Vallarta receive you or welcome you last time? Or what were the challenges you, you faced trying to promote the show? I mean, that's a really great question. Thank you for that. It was, it was really well received. Those, those, uh, we, we, we ended up having a really wonderful support system in Puerto Vallarta, friends and colleagues and, uh, it, even strangers who came to see us were really excited about something a little bit different. Um, and I mean, like you say, some of those drag queens are just the most hilarious. The head of lettuce, I'm just, I'm in awe of how fast she is. Um, but ours is, ours is, show is a little bit different. And um, it went over really well. I mean, you were there. You took that awesome picture. You tell, how did you enjoy the show? What did you think as somebody who'd not seen this kind of comedy before? Well, I, I enjoyed myself tremendously. I had a lot of fun laughing because I can, I can relate to the material. I'm of a certain age. I'm kind of familiar with a show called Leave it to Beaver, which I understand was on television. Yes. So I get the whole sense of what you're trying to do to bring a certain standard of, uh, of well-being from, yeah. from, from another uh, decade to the present and compare. Um, so I'd be the first person to, to recommend other people to come and enjoy it. But for those people that are truly not familiar with the television show or with what you bring to the table, who is your show going to be most enjoyed by? Another good question. Honestly, it's a perfect date night show. It's a because one, you know, one of the things that we we ask uh, the audience is as we kind of go through and meet everybody is, what's the secret to the longevity of your relationship? And we go to town on on using that. Um, we also it's also great for girls night out. Get a bunch of gal pals together, come out, have a drink in the bar. Uh, and it's also, it's, it's a great show for the expat community. We've purposely kept the ticket prices for this show as low as possible because we know that sometimes that's a bit of a barrier for people that live there to be able to afford to go see some of these, uh, these comedy shows. Um, 
So I, 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 frankly, I think it's for everybody. I love it. I love it. Um, let me put this up on the screen one more time. You yeah. are going to be, oh my God, the type is so small, I cannot even read it. <laughs> so <laughs> we're that's doing not your fault. That's not your fault. That's just me. You're going to be here Friday, December 6th at 8 p.m., Saturday, December 7th at 8 p.m., Friday, December 13th at 8 p.m., and Saturday, December 14th at 8 p.m. Four shows and yeah. a little um, winged creature told me that some of your shows are for proceeds. Proceeds are going to charities. Is we will be raising, yes, we will be raising money um, each night. The first weekend, we're going to be raising money for the Sula Society, who I have a very soft spot in my heart because this little, I have two Mexican street dog rescues. Oh. I love that you're at the Rio Cafe. His name is Rio. Oh, I love it. He came from Puerto Vallarta, and my other one, Betty, also came from Puerto Vallarta, and the Sula Society helped me with with that. And then the second weekend, we're going to be raising money for the, the Rise Children's Charity. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, how wonderful. I, I met Lisa last April when we drove down, we drove to Mazatlan together to see the eclipse. <laughs> you crazy gal, I am dying with envy. I would have loved to do that. That was a, a, a white knuckle drive on the highway. She's a great driver, don't get me wrong. Everybody else freaked me out. So we'll be, we'll be raising money for both charities, uh, both weekends, as well, um, uh, we, I was going to go, just go back real quickly when you were asking who this show is for. If you're planning a Christmas party for your employees, that unfortunately we only speak English, um, this is also a great show for that because if you get in touch with me, I, we can also customize an improv show to your audience. So if you're bringing a group of people down, we can shine a spotlight on you. And we really celebrate and ele elevate our audience members. We never, as you saw in the show, we're never mean with our comedy. It's always uh, a, a, a wonderful embrace. And we often give out cookies. That's good to know, because as an audience member, you know, I'm always kind of frightened to be pulled out from the audience because there are some pretty mean queens out there and you just never know what's gonna happen to your well-being. We're the opposite of that. And I love the mean queens, don't get me wrong, but we're also really good. I've been doing, Karen and I have been doing improv for 20, 30 years each. So we are really good at being able to read a, an audience member's face. We can tell if pulling you on stage is gonna give you trauma for the rest of your life. We will leave you alone. And we can tell the people who are fun to play with. So we're really, really good at being able to read our audiences. Okay, so being an improv artist, give me, just to help the, the bashful audience members out there, and this, this doesn't work to your advantage, but we wanna be helpful. Look at the camera and give me your best, I'm scared shitless, please don't pick me as face? a volunteer. Okay, so yeah. this is the face that I will I will not pick. I won't pick that face. Okay, I can I also, make that face. I also <laughs> won't pick the, the person who's like purposely not making eye contact. Oh, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've been that person. And now, if, we, if we do ask for a volunteer and you volunteer your friend, uh -huh. surefire way to get pulled up on stage. Oh, so if I go like the person next to you, pick me. Yeah. Okay, now how about the overly enthusiastic audience member that wants to participate in everything? What kind of face should they be making? Oh, if they want to participate in everything, it's like that, oh, 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 and I probably won't pick you. <laughs> That's the noises I make when I go to the bathroom, but you didn't need to know that. <laughs> What else are we, I know you, have, we have a giveaway. We have two tickets yes, to give away. I have two tickets to give away, yeah. Let's, let's do that now. And while we do that, um, we will figure out uh, our final questions. Let me set this up because I haven't even set it up. For people that, that know the dynamic, for, for the people that have been here before, these are tickets for the show. Obviously you want to be, um, in Puerto Vallarta while this show is going, and I recommend it wholeheartedly. Albert, we should go together. You would love the show, even though you're saying that I shared too much information. I don't care. This is my broadcast. Anyhow, if um, you want to win two tickets to go see Diana improvise and scare the hell out of us, 
<laughs> by pulling us out from uh, the audience. Just write the single word boobs oh, nice. on your comment and you'll be eligible to participate on the drawing. So please write boobs by itself. And while we're seeing people collect, while we're collecting um, these entries, Diana, please tell me, what are we forgetting? Well, we are also teaching an improv workshop. So if you've ever thought, I wish that I could think faster on my feet. I wish I could get over stage fright. I wish that I could learn how to listen better with my colleagues or my friends. I want to just, you know, in a really safe, fun environment, learn the basics of improv. We're going to be teaching a beginner's workshop on the um, 9th, Sunday the 9th, from 1 to 4 p.m. And if they want to register for that, they can email directly at leaveittocleavage at gmail.com. And it's uh, 350 pesos for a four-hour workshop. You, Stop. It, it, it will revolutionize your life. Improv is one of those skills that even if you don't think that you're ever going to become a professional performer, it can help you in so many other aspects of your life. Wow. And where is this going to be? It will be at the theater. At the theater. At the, at the Art by Art Theater. Yeah. Coolness. Yeah. Coolness. I think the improv workshop is as appealing to me as seeing your show again. You may see me at both, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let us do this drawing. And here is our drawing screen. We have a total of five people Ooh. competing for two tickets, and I'm drawing right now. Tomala. This is so Ooh. cool that you can do this. Ooh. 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 I may be a 50s girl, but. Oh no, I can't be, no, 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 no. I can't be the winner. Completely improvised, everybody, completely improvised. No, 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 I can, we're gonna draw again. I don't wanna be the winner. That's no fun. What a real, this is such a cool thing that you can do here. I, Thank you. And your, your technology is amazing. Sherry Cooper, Sherry, Sherry Cooper. Cooper. Are you even gonna be in town to win, to enjoy this? Please let us know, because if you're not actually, I'm gonna, Mute my microphone so that I can cough. Hang on. Okay. Well, Sherry Cooper, you can email me directly at leaveittocleavage at gmail.com and we can decide what night you want to come and we'll get that all sorted out for you. Oh, Sherry is now asking, when is it? You. Sixth, December 6th or 7th, uh, 13th or 14th. Yes. Four shows. Yeah. Are you going to be in town, Sherry? If not, um, I mean, you can always transfer your tickets to somebody that's going to be in town. Ah, and I just, I must have just been reading your mind. Can I give, can I give it yeah, to yeah, someone course. else? The answer is yes. So are you going to let us know now who is going to be the recipient of this ticket? Sometime yeah, before Christmas? Yeah. yeah, it's a great Christmas present to give out. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so Sherry may make up her mind in, in right now, and we may see her comment or not. In the meantime, Diana. Oh, give it to me, Hal. Oh, okay, there you go. So my <laughs> friend, uh, <laughs> pick me, Sherry. And, and Michal, says, uh, Michal says, pick me, Sherry, and Sherry says, give it to me, Hal. Okay. Okay. So there you go. All there right, well, go. Michal, then you need to email me at leaveittocleavage at gmail.com, and we'll arrange what day you want to come. There you go. And I know these two ladies and I can tell you, Michal, this show is fantastic. You, now you need to pick a date to go with you. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, Diana, it's a pleasure to see you. It's nice to see that things are working good for you. And I'm so glad that you're giving Puerto Vallarta another chance. I think our audiences need to learn more about comedy shows. Yeah. This is a great thing to have happening here in town. Am, you, am I missing anything? Is there anything else you wish to share? No, I think that's fabulous. I, and I'm so pleased with how, uh, how the audiences in Puerto Vallarta have embraced us, which is fabulous, because this is my retirement plan, is to eventually move down to Puerto Vallarta for half the year and do shows and teach workshops and, and continue to build a comedy community. I, there's so many fantastic Canadian performers that I work with who would love to come down and do more. So that's my secret goal. 
I think that is absolutely wonderful. And if you're looking for a comfortable performance space, well not performance, but teaching space, do consider a visit to the Joint Boutique Hotel, which is yeah. where we're broadcasting from, because there's an event center where I teach my music appreciation presentations, but a lot of people are teaching things like yoga and painting and there are cooking classes. So this is a very comfortable air conditioned environment for you to consider. Good to know, good to know. And we all just stare longingly at what used to be in Canto through the windows. There you go. Diana, thank you so much for joining me. Thank I hope you. to see you in person soon. Safe travels. You must be around the corner from, from reaching Puerto Vallarta. A couple of weeks, can't wait. Excellent. Until then, thank you for joining us thank today. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Okay, so that was Diana Francis. And now we are going to be joined by a friend of mine who is a wonderful human being. Let me give him a microphone. Da, 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 da. And let's make this happen. Hold on. Let me make sure that we're both. Yes, we are both on, on, on the screen. All right. Um, just say something really quickly. Uh, hello. Ah, good, 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 good. And let me very quickly change the banner and put up your banner. John, how are you today? Very good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So what's, what's the latest and greatest? Uh, well, in, on November 20th, we are having the opening night for our new play, Beware the House on Haunted Hill. It's being presented by uh, Teatro Sin Borders uh, at the American School in Marina Vallarta. And you're the director. I am the director uh, and uh, sort of fell into it. Uh, I uh, had uh, a career as a writer up in uh, of writer, uh, movies and TV up north and decided to try directing when I got down here. And you directed a production previously for Teatro Sin Borders, yes, right? Yes, we did one called Leading Ladies last uh -huh. year and it was quite successful and uh, I think you were there, you saw it and uh, we got a few laughs. I think this one's going to be even funnier. Tell me a little bit about the play itself. Uh, the play is based on a classic 1959 Vincent Price horror movie called The House on Haunted Hill, um, which was a bit of a, of a well-beloved film. Uh, it was the first haunted house movie ever made. It had the first uh, jump, what they called jump scare oh. in cinema history. Uh, it actually um, it inspired Hitchcock to make Psycho. Oh, really? It did so well. But William Castle was more than a filmmaker, he was just an ultimate showman. And so he would have audience members sign insurance forms before they went into the theater in case they died of fright. And he would have ambulances parked in front of the theater. He'd have nurses and doctors waiting for the audiences uh, to, in case they fainted from the shock of what they were going to see on the screen. And his uh, one what, of the that was that a gimmick or it was, was a that? great gimmick? And he also had what he called emergio, where at the end of the movie, a skeleton would fly out over the heads of the audiences. Oh that was goodness. the most popular thing of the movie, actually, and he made a fortune. Oh wow! <laughs> so how so is this, this is a loving tribute. A this became a loving tribute by a couple of writers, one in Chicago and one in. Um, LA, both entertainment writers, Catherine Funkhauser, and I'm sorry I cannot remember the name of uh, the Chicago gentleman. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I've been in contact with Catherine, and she's a lovely lady. But um, it's, a very, it's basically a camp version of the movie. It, uh, you don't have to have seen the movie to enjoy it. Um, and it's much funnier. Now, the movie itself was very creaky and old, so this is taking off on that very much so. And lots of Lots of effects, lots of music, lots of stage effects, magic effects, How about floating the... heads, floating skeletons, acid pits. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so and this is funny. Oh yes, very funny. It's actually and uh, very family friendly. Bring the kids. Oh really? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Now the Teatro Sin Borders productions take place at the American School. At the American School in, in Marina Vallarta. In Marina Vallarta. Tell me about the experience of going to the theater at the American School, particularly for those people that are not familiar with the venue. That's a great venue. Um, the school itself is a, is a terrific campus. 
the stage is a very large stage. It's an outdoor theater. Uh, they've actually installed a huge overhead uh, fan <laughs> so you can stay cool. But um, it's, it is a beautiful uh, location. It's theater under the stars. And uh, close to the airport, but there's a lot of thunder and lightning in our show. So I think the airport's going to complain about our noise this time. Good for you and good for them. Any um, challenges or considerations for people that are not familiar with the Marina Vallarta area? Where do they park their car? Can they grab a bike nearby? Or um, There's usually parking across the road outside the uh, plaza, the Marina Plaza that's mm -hmm. there. Uh, and also parking along the side streets. A lot of people Uber out, of course. I have a loaded question. What are the challenges of participating in a theatrical production for a company that only works part of the time? Like, you guys don't do shows on, on, on the summer months, do you? Uh, we try. We're trying to expand the season. Um, we'll be do, we're hoping to do another one in April as well. We haven't quite decided yet. There's a process. But um, we're hoping to do two a year. Mm -hmm. and, and also increase our community footprint with uh, smaller shows, possibly shows for kids, touring shows. This one is a large show, require a large stage and a large set. And um, I know our great producer and founder, Sandra McDonald, is um, very keen on finding shows that can be done on the road, simple sets, and including uh, many more uh, local talent, as much local talent as we can, both English and Hispanic. Excellent. I've noticed recently on social media that you've amassed some uh, community partner sponsors. Quite a few. This is quite wonderful. Thanks to, yes, thanks to a uh, uh, wonderful man who's in charge of that, Seamus Byrne, who, was in our, who starred in our last show along with uh, Dill uh, in Leading Ladies. He's taking a back seat right now uh, off stage, and he's put together quite a few um, uh, platinum, gold, and silver sponsors, both. I think about 40, over 40 now. That's great. Well, so I, I'm seeing We're some... very, very gratified. And that's the idea is that TSB, Teatro Sin Borders, mm -hmm. really wants to be a community theater mm -hmm. uh, for the community. Um, and we've kept our ticket prices down to it. They're 250 pesos for a ticket. And the idea is that we want, uh, for the English speaking, especially for the local English speaking community, to be able to afford to come out and see it. You, know, I think you don't need wonderful. a thousand pesos a night to go out and see a show. And it's a proper, the it's a proper legitimate theater. Um, it's not a musical review. Um, it's not a jukebox musical. It's, it's a real play with real characters and sets. And we've got magic tricks and all sorts of things going on. So. You've got magic to do. Oh my God, I'm segueing. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't want to segue into song. Um, what does Teatro Sin Borders need the most right now? Um, more volunteers. More volunteers. We can always use more volunteers and um, more community sponsors. The more, the more, uh, every community sponsor is another bum in the seats, as somebody said, so that's great for us, because mm -hmm. uh, they're going to come and see the play. That is ultimately the, uh, the final goal, is we just want to get as many people out as possible to see this play. We have nine shows going. We can seat uh, it's a large theater. We can see it up to 250 people or more. And uh, there's always tickets available at the door, or you can buy them online. Are we missing anything? Not that I can think of, but I'm sure we are. <laughs> are, we, are we doing a giveaway? Uh, no, uh, there is a, uh, we do have a discount going on. I think Dill was, had the uh, lowdown on that. Oh One my of goodness. my wonderful cast members is here. Is, is, that, is that our segue? We have two wonderful cast members here with us, still divine, and uh, my uh, production coordinator and uh, her, his co-star, and my, happens to be my wife, Pamela Shepard. I've uh, heard of her. The, the two of them are <laughs> the two of them are in the cast of this one, and they're quite wonderful to work with, uh, as usual. And um, Dill is um, in charge of. Uh, the community uh, reach out. My goodness. 
Well, unless you have something else to tell me. No, come we, out and see the show. Well, let's do a magic trick in which I get you out of the picture. Wait, 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 come back. <laughs> you still have my microphone. Oh, dear. I'm going to take that away from you. Well, <laughs> well, well, we get our next, our next volunteer. Oh, my goodness. You're taller than me. Hi, Dill. How let are me, you? Let me microphone you first. I figured leave it to cleavage, you know? Well, I just Put felt... Put it right in here. I just felt... <laughs> you, I felt your warm leg and I got a little nervous. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hi, baby! Thank you. It's wonderful it's, to be here. You know, I have to tell you, I have something to confess. Ooh. Um, Spill the tea. Well, I was, I was like so obsessed with your amazing energy on, on stage. When, when you guys did Leading Ladies, and I was like, how can, can, how can I get close to this man uh, without seeming stocky or without, um, I was just enamored by you. And I'm so glad that you're sitting here today and that you are the adopted son of our other guests. Exactly. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm a divine shepherd, yeah. So, so yes. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop blushing like a schoolgirl, and I'm gonna make this about you and not about me. Oh my goodness! Let me just put you on the frame. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Dill Divine. The only thing I have left to do before we get onto this is to change my banner and put your beautiful name on the screen. Oh, there thank you. you go. So, Dill Divine. Pleasure. How? How did you end up connecting with these loony actors? Because I know that you were not an actor before. <laughs> what happened? Uh, the short story, um, how I first got introduced to Teatro Sin Borders, begins uh -huh. with Sandy. And she was dropping by some of Ethan Black's acting classes when he was here for a good minute in Puerto Vallarta, like over a year ago. And that's where I met her. She very enthusiastically came up to me, encouraged me to audition for the play. And I was so super into it. I've always been curious about acting from a young age. And different life circumstances had me focus more on grades, needing to work, and earning a scholarship that I didn't get to do that passion. But now in the space of life where I'm loving myself and reparenting myself. I'm giving myself the support that I would have wanted when I was young to explore these dreams. And it's been a blessing ever since. And I met John and Pam through a karaoke class with ZZ, who is one of the lovely guests and community members here. Yes. And we end up meeting. I did a card reading for Pamela. And then days later, I run into her at the audition for Lend Me a Tenor, my first show with Teatros and Borders. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So how long have you been in Puerto Vallarta then? It can't be that long. No, we're coming on three years in December. How did you discover our city? <laughs> uh, what was his name? Well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know the boys' names, but give it to the gays. I was, um, like I was in Goa, India in 2020 and 2021. And I just happened to be on Instagram at the time, social media, following some gay account and gay meme account. And I see this reposting of this video of, and I, I love it, and I say it with love, screaming Mary's on a boat that was going down. You know, you would think it was the Titanic. I remember and, that. And you know, the internet was like, what are they doing on a boat? You know, and for me, I see the video, and aside from, admittedly a little bit of a laugh, I'm not going to lie, because it was just really funny. I mean, I'm glad they're safe. If it was tragic, it would have been different. Okay, but, okay, time out, time out, time out. Let's clarify this for the audience. For those of you watching, once upon a time, there was a bay cruise, or, or a boat cruise, sí. full of homosexuals, <laughs> and the boat imploded, or something happened, such that very much a la Titanic, the boat started sinking. And this is not a funny matter, but you know, when you're a gay boy vacationing in a gay friendly destination, the last thing that you think is that your boat is going to sink. Yeah. And it was a seeing freak some of those photographs and comments being made on stage, I'm um, not on stage, on screen, on, on, on social media, was just hysterical. 
Yeah, it was like a range. And some of it was more so the juxtaposition of the music, like the party energy, and then you witness like the, the high-pitched screams and squeals. For me though, I saw the video and it put me on to Puerto Vallarta and knowing that there's a very gay and LGBT welcoming and affirming area in Mexico. And I intuitively was already receiving calls and visions about Mexico during the start of my India trip. So it lingered in the back of my mind and when it became time to move on from India, my intuition guided me to Mexico. And then in a meditation with a fellow coach, it was between, I was recommended to Mazunte, Oaxaca, and then I also was remembering Puerto Vallarta, and then in that visualization, my spirit chose Puerto Vallarta. You're sitting here next to me, and your good energy is palpable. Oh, thank you. Why don't you tell our audience members how you are putting it to good use? I would say in a variety of fun and joyful ways. So I'm sitting here, you know, with Teatro Sin Borders as an actor in my third production with them. I also introduce myself as your friendly neighborhood queer muse, oracle, and soul coach. So I still, I'm mainly known for tarot and oracle card readings here in town and my intuitive coaching. So I still do that. And then I'm cultivating the muse between acting, I want to do more modeling. I've been actually working on singing with some lessons with David Sabella here in town, which has been very healing for the inner child and for my soul as well, like reclaiming my voice in a variety of ways and mediums. So I'm just looking for joyful ways to collaborate on these creative and expressive projects as well as spirituality. Um, and I hope to have in my event, Divine Timing, the second one, sometime in December at well, Mystic Circle Cafe. Tell me more about that event. Ooh, okay, so that one was a blast. And the short of it is anybody who's ever listened to Abraham Hicks, you'll get it right away. For those of you who are like, who the heck is Abraham Hicks? Basically a spiritual channeler who talks about things such as law of attraction, manifestation, raising your vibration, essentially cultivating the life that you truly want and that would fulfill you. In my own unique way, I use my gifts of card reading and divination to receive and channel messages for the audience. And Divine Timing is an interactive event where I'll do a mix of group readings directly, then bring some people up for a more direct one-on-one -on -one channeling. Yet the way Spirit works through me is everybody's always connected. It's universally applicable. And I always invite us, never force the fit, you know, with a reading, take what resonates. Also allow yourself, remember, we are often messengers and blessings for other people and blessings work through us. So even if a message isn't directly yours, it may apply sometime later when you can be around another. Wow. Let's see. Let's go back to, because this might be too much for some people. Let's see. <laughs> you know, and, and I know. how do you actually, even before we go back, Let's see. if you're aware of the fact that this might be too much for some people, how do you make it Simple and accessible? Well, it's better than what I was going to say. I was going to say palatable, but palatable <laughs> is a horrible word because it would imply that this is not a pleasant awareness discovery. It's a pleasant awareness discovery yes. for anyone who is willing to go there. Absolutely. But if for people that have never had such an experience or don't know how to begin or how to go about it, how do you make it? Okay, so think about it as as long as you're open-minded, open-hearted, and you're seeking some version of clarity, improvement, or transformation, you can get something out of this event. Am I looking? Okay, good. And I would say, I bring my personality. I'm a very joyful-oriented person. So although I will be serious and respectful for the topics that require it, I keep it lighthearted. Spirit plays through and with me and with us. So to keep it simple, I'll pull some cards. We'll get some messages together and hopefully you'll walk away feeling lighter and more inspired as well as maybe with some more clarity on some next steps you can take to unlock more abundance, more peace, or at the very least, just more fulfillment and some joy. And it's a good evening. And anybody who knows um, Kennedy Morgan in town, if you like mediumship oh, yeah. events, right? Mm -hmm. Similar event, but I use a different, let's say different tools and different, I want to say, approach. But similar in the sense of we're here serving spirit, giving messages, and having a joyful evening. I have one more question, but before I ask one more question, 
Is there anything else that, that I haven't asked that you, it is important for you that people know? I haven't even asked you what role you're going to have on the play. Oh, yes. Okay, with the show, I'm going to be in a smaller role in this one. I was in a lead one, last one in Leading Ladies, which is a blast. In this one, I'm going to be playing, um, El, what do you call it, Younger Slides, which essentially is like a lurch character from the Adams Family. Uh -huh. So a bit of a very tall and lanky butler who's going to give you creepy blank, extension, uh, <laughs> blank stares and expressions. And I'm going to be doing a little bit more physical comedy and acting as well. So you may see some special movements behind the scenes and some funny gags that I'm a part of. Uh, so definitely please come to the show. And just so you all know, your audience, we want to extend to you our friends and family discounts. So if you enter this code, Comunidad20, that will give you a 20% discount on a ticket, and you can use that right on our Eventbrite checkout page. Let me put a banner on the screen so that people know exactly how to type that. Comunidad... 20, sí. 20, together. Exactly, all one word. Okay, perfect. Oh, yes, and we're also going to have um, Friends of PV Animals. They're doing our concessions. So please, if you're looking for snacks, I know you were talking about in the marina, if they come to the show, support, get your snacks and treats there. We'll have some yummies. And we're going to be raising funds and accepting donations for Toys for Tots. So if you're looking to contribute for the holiday season, please bring some toys, donate, and, you know, we're all about the community. I have one final question. I'm always fascinated and enamored by people like you who come to Puerto Vallarta and allow yourselves, we allow ourselves, because it's happened to me as well, to have our surroundings speak to us about what to do. And I'm not talking about, you know, okay, what restaurant should I go to tonight? Nee, 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 nee. No, I think a lot of people come here and, and think, oh, this is paradise and I'm gonna be perfectly happy here, but because they don't come here with a specific purpose mm -hmm. or repurpose, mm -hmm. then it gets old and boring yes. very quickly. What kind of advice would you have for people that don't know how to go about finding that purpose, other than seeking a personal consultation with you, which I'm sure would go a long way. But exactly. any, do you have any advice for the audience? Yes. The first thing, honestly, that came to mind and heart was breathe and listen. Listen to your soul. And that might sound more complicated, so to make it easier, listen to your curiosity. What's something that catches your interest? What's a long lost dream or interest from your inner child? For me, for example, singing, acting, creative play and expression. And then because I knew that, next thing I know in my reality, certain stuff popped up and I haven't had a lot of resources, yet the universe put right in my face either classes that were super cheap, free experiences, and it was between, all I had to do was show up. So when it pops up, show up, what do you have to lose? This place is full of magic, and if you allow it to guide you, it will deliver you and take care of you. I fully believe Puerto Vallarta is very magical. Like, I'm a living and walking miracle and a testament to it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure. I'm so, I didn't know you were coming. I'm still blushing like a girl. Oh, it is a pleasure <laughs> to see you here. And, um, and, um, and your leg is touching mine, and that makes me nervous <laughs> in the best possible way. Can you tell I don't get out much? <laughs> Jill, it is a pleasure to see you. Thank you very much. I'm going to get you out of my screen now. Thank you so much. It's been an honor. So that we can take, so that I can take this, ooh, <laughs> take this microphone from you. And we have our... Nipple gate. Oh, it smells good. <laughs> we have yet another person, but I loved, I loved your advice. Thank you know, and I really, I really hope he's still here. I really hope you keep doing all the wonderful things that you're doing. And look who's joining me now. Let me give you a weapon. Oh my goodness, Pamela, look at you. First of all, you have the best taste in necklaces. I do. This is a very fabulous hand-created piece out of the Paco Ojeda collection. Oh, stop it. <laughs> 
How are you today, my dear friend? I, I am so good. I'm so good. Um, we're in. Oh, sorry. That's okay. You can touch me. Oh, I groped his leg. Um, but but don't. Get I'm personal. blushing you, like you a schoolgirl. You don't make no. You know. Well, well, Dill has. I'm sorry. There's a leg and. Which one? I love you. I love you. I know, but my husband's here, and and you're gay. If you weren't gay and I wasn't married, you'd be in big trouble. I don't have a husband, but I have a tomato. A so, tomato. Yes, yes. I don't have a husband. I have a tomato. Well, I, I want to hear more about this, but this is not the time and place. No, no, this is not the time and place to talk about my tomato. Let me put your banner on the screen because you also get a banner. Pamela, welcome to the spotlight. Thank you. What brings you here today? Well, we are all here to talk about Teatro Sim Borders and this new play, uh -huh. uh, Beware the House on Haunted Hill, because I don't even know if there's been a play like this done in Bayarda before. You know, it was, it's actually not a very common play anywhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's very unique, very fun. The characters are extremely well defined and very, very funny. And we have the best actors you could ever even think of wanting. They're, they're, our cast members are so delightful and we enjoy each other so much uh, that people have said over and over again that they can feel the love coming off the stage and the joy that we get from working with each other. But you're not, you're not on stage for this one, are you? I'm on stage every stinking minute for this one. <laughs> this is the, this is the, the biggest role I've had so far. Oh, so you are on stage. Oh yeah, yeah, I play Ruth and Ruth Bridges and I'm a New York journalist and I'm very saucy with a very sharp tongue. But whoa, 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 whoa. But you just told me that you are like the production assistant. I'm the production coordinator for this one. So do you have time to sleep and eat? What is that? Okay. Sleep and eat, no. That answers my question. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, you know what? It's so funny because I finally figured out something about myself is that no matter what event I'm involved in, I, I'm the production coordinator. <laughs> so it's, for all three plays, um, the last play I was co-producer, but I actually did exactly the same thing, which is basically I like to get a big picture of what this needs to look like, and then I look for the holes and the spaces that need to be filled, and I'm very good at this. It's just like, so this one I'm doing costumes, John and I do props together, um, I did volunteer coordination, social media, but basically um, anything that has to do with that production going forward and meeting completion. And I did not get my role by sleeping with the director, although many people have commented on that. <laughs> Escándalo! Escándalo! He got his role from me. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> This is my family here. Now, you are on the opposite end of the spectrum of what Dill and I were talking about, whereas Dill was talking about finding purpose and meaning in a town that may be familiar to some, but to some people that are just going to hear not so much. Mm -hmm. You are on the opposite spectrum over the, about that because you've come into, you've came here, you found your place, you had a previous business doing soaps and, and fragrances and you brought it to the table. You became involved with this production. You are so busy. I am busy. <laughs> it's not even funny. So, whereas with with Dill, the question was, how do you find your purpose? With you, the question is, how do you take a break from the so many wonderful purposes that yeah. you can't seem to be able to resist? 
Well, because you could always say no, and girl, I don't see you knowing anybody. I never say no. I, but, but, yeah, <laughs> but but you know, how do you balance? How do you balance? Uh, well, you know, actually, Dill was intrinsic in this one for um, getting me involved in Teatro and Borders because I was exactly at that crossroads. I was in a place where. Um, you know, yeah, I can do soaps and, and my organic sprays, and some of my organic sprays are so completely unique that I thought I could let go of them. I thought I could continue to make them when I visited the States and supply a couple of stores. I thought that, but then I got down here, and um, that just proved to be really kind of unwieldy. So I started selling the sprays and, and the soaps, um, to friends and neighbors and, and giving them to really cute um, TV show hosts. But um, yeah, so that was one direction. And Your lavender and, thing is a must. Uh, thank Your you. lavender spray, it's like every night on my pillow, heaven sent. Oh, you're so sweet, I love you. But, and then I do uh, brownies that are insane and I do, uh, you know what? Wait, 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 What do you mean brownies that are insane? They're not. Are you are you insane brownies like the ones I make? Uh, no. Okay. No. So you're you're sugar insane. It, it's it's dopamine insane from the incredible gooiness of them. My brownies have no mean. They just have the dope. I know. But um boom. But um bum. <laughs> and then I make pepper jelly because I discovered that there is no such thing in Mexico as pepper jelly. True. And so I'm making that, and, and actually, you know what? Um, we're going to add it to the product line for um, Augustina's um, Aslan Samia product line, where she does the organic peanut butters. I know. So We've tried it, and it's wonderful. Peanut butter and je pepper jelly. So that's another direction. Anyway, I had all these directions, and so. So how do you? Come Dill gave me a reading, and. And what did Dill say to you? He said that um, basically I had uh, put in an audition form for Teatro Sim Borders just because it was in a neighborhood. I thought it'd be fun. I have a background in children's theater. And then I thought, oh man, there's going to be like a hundred old ladies in Puerto Vallarta going out for this role. And I haven't been on a stage in like 30 years. so. Uh, that's stupid. So I get a hold of Sandy and I said, oh, just forget about it, you know. And she goes, oh, I'm really disappointed in you because <laughs> I really wanted to see your audition. And I'm like, okay. But Adil did a reading and he said that my path was going to become very apparent very quickly. And he asked to give me a reading. We met at this karaoke thing, and we were like immediately, we had immediate con connection with each other. And so um, he gave me the reading and said that, and I thought, oh, okay. So I did go to the audition, and I'm sitting there, and who walks in? Dill. And I said, hey, you said I was gonna be on a path, you didn't say that you were gonna be on it with me. Well. And so, <laughs> and, then I didn't hear from Sandy for a week after the audition, so I thought, well, obviously I didn't get the role, or it's fine. And then she calls and she goes, I'm sorry it's been so long. We just couldn't decide which role to give to you, so I'll let you choose. Do you want to be Julia or do you want to be Maria? And I thought, oh, I want to be the hot-headed Italian wife of an opera star. Heck yeah. So. <laughs> So that's how I got started with Teatro Sin Borders. That sounds You're wonderful. Crazy. That's a crazy Italian. <laughs> he cheats on me. So, are we, are we missing anything? What, is there something that you want to get out there that we haven't touched on? Uh, no, except, uh, yeah, we, I will reiterate that what, what uh, Del said, that uh, Teatro Sin Borders is a community of actors and volunteers who have extremely high regard for each other. Anybody who joins this family is gonna be very happy about doing so. And we do constantly look for ways to benefit the community. So last time it was Sula for concessions, this time it's Friends of PV Animals, and we are gonna be collecting for Toys for Tots. So 
Yay! That and, is And excellent. you can go to teatrosandborders.com and buy tickets, and then there's, um, and then there's Eventbrite ones too. Yeah. Yes, all that information is being displayed on the screen. Yay! Yay! Which brings us to the end of today. It's always a pleasure to connect with you, dear friend. It is a I pleasure know. to see your husband, John. And Dill, oh, I'm still blushing. <laughs> you are extreme. <laughs> I'm still blushing. And it's not, it's not, you know, a lot of times, if I can just take a moment, we, we're such a, the gay community is, is, is such a horny, hormone intensive <laughs> community that sometimes no it's, like it's, it. it's challenging to share um, mm -hmm. expressions of love and appreciation between one another. Yeah. And of course, Jill, you are like 200 years younger than me, so I would never want you to get the wrong impression, but I just, I just, I'm so happy that you're here and I'm so happy that there are people of your generation uh, spreading good vibes and good energy and inspiring people to take chances uh, on things that we otherwise would not be doing. And you, Pam, Pamela, you know, it's like we get to a certain age in which we think, oh no, well, I couldn't do that anymore. And I just love the fact that you take chances. Aww, and it is a you. source of inspiration. I do hope that this vibe will somehow transfer over to the audience. John? It does. And what? Sandy McDonald, you know, without Sandy McDonald, there would be no TSB. This is Sandy's dream. And Sandy is in the more mature years of her life as am I. And She's a lady of age. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. And I'm a lady who is oblivious to my age and probably should be more aware of that. But <laughs> and I'm a lady who really needs to go number one. So we're going to wrap okay. this up. You know, it comes with age. You know, you get older and you need to go, well, never mind. Too much information. <laughs> Pamela, thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you. And audience, thank you for another spotlight. We never know who's going to show up and we never know what's going to come out of our mouths. But trust me. <laughs> All we are looking to do here is to connect with one another and to create wonderful opportunities for the community. So, with that said, I think it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> goodbye, everyone. We'll see you next week and tomorrow morning for Coffee and Headlines. <laughs> <laughs>